tonight are the highlights of uh, the subject on prayer and fasting that I've been trying to get across to uh, John Public. And tonight I'm just picking out the salient points. I'm not getting into all of the nitty and the gritty. I'm just perusing what was already done. And uh, I'm going to give you them point by point. I'm going to list them one, two, etc, etc. Number one, Fasting is a spiritual discipline that prevents the cracks in your spirit because the enemy will use cracks in your spirit and mind to build a toehold, then a foothold, then a stronghold. There can be no stronghold built in your life if the discipline of fasting is a part of what you do. It prevents cracks. But the indiscipline of eating now causes cracks in your soul, cracks in your spirit, and that invites the devil to come on over and see how much damage he can do. That even though you're a child of God, you can't stop the enemy from coming in. Number two, Joel 2 and 12, the fast is not reserved for old people alone. Let's, let's get rid of that myth. 
It was reserved for the entire nation. And there are very few times in our day and time when nations fast. Number three, fasting is a command of Jesus. He said, when you fast, not if you fast, not when you feel like it, when you fast. It should be a normal pattern and behavior of the believer to be a participant in the spiritual discipline of fasting. Number four, Jesus fasted to set us an example and we should follow his example. Number five, during the fast, you cannot do as you please and your itinerary should change and shift and the things that used to take up your time in terms of eating, drinking, socializing, etc., that time should be spent in prayer, meditation, things of that nature. Your schedule has to be changed. You can't fast and do as you please. Number six, change your schedule because, and here's the salient point in number six, fasting includes how you act. It doesn't prove that you're more spiritual than anybody, but your actions on the, day, on the normal day when you work and go on your job shouldn't be the normal things you do on the time when you fast. Number seven, when you fast, please don't look miserable. <laughs> I just throw that out there. All right, all right, all right. Number eight, Second Chronicles 20 and 3. God obligates himself to hear a fasting prayer, a prayer accompanied by fasting. Number nine, Acts 13, 1 and 2. Worshiping and fasting should go together. And when that happens, Acts 13, 1 and 2, Barnabas and Saul were released to ministry and the prophetic became even clearer. Separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul. Men were released into ministry due to a fast. You know how many people aren't, aren't going into their ministry because no fasting was done. So the spiritual tone and atmosphere is not conducive for the release of ministry. When last have you seen a solid ministry being released and your heart was pleased about it? When I hear people get released today, I see who it is and I say, oh God, it's another casualty about to happen. They're not ready. They're not prepared. They haven't been tested. And then the prophetic voice became clear. Separate unto me, Barnabas, A, and Saul. It was very specific. Number nine. Fasting creates an atmosphere for people to be activated. Esther's secret to her power was fasting. Do not eat nor drink three days. And me and my maidens will do the same. The atmosphere. Number 10. Fasting must be accompanied by abstaining from natural pleasures for a spiritual purpose. Number 11. When we fast, the spirit man is prioritized and uh, our belly is no longer the controlling factor. Number 12. Fasting demands replacing the time that you used to spend in other things during that fast. You spend that time on God and on the things of God. Number 13. Dedicate time for meditation, listening for God, for God, then listening to God, then doing what he says. During the fast, you listen for God. Then when he speaks, you listen to God. Then after you listen to God, do what he says. And please, for God's sake, don't do it eventually. When God speaks to you, obey right away. I'm so tired of church folk. You know, the Lord spoke to me. I'm going to do it in 2040. <laughs> What's the point of telling you anything? All right, number 13. Fasting does not change God's mind. Fasting changes us. Because we have more of a God capacity and more, more spiritual things can happen in us and through us and with us and to us due to the fast because when we fast the flesh is put down and the spirit takes the driver's seat fasting changes us number 14 fasting puts you in a position for God to use you it puts you in the position God wants to use you all the time but God doesn't bless mess number 15 Fasting flushes out the gunk so that your flow is more powerful, your spiritual flow. 
There's a lot of gunk that we accumulate over the days. A lot of mess goes through our mind, our thoughts. You know, it's a wicked world. What, what can I say? And you're going to be exposed to wickedness and you will think and see wickedness and think wickedness and God can't use wickedness. Number 15. Fasting breaks habits and bondages. The fact that you can put away that food alone is a habit that's broken. Number 16. Fasting quiets the heart. And when you're quieter in heart and spirit, you're more ready to hear from God. Because the body is no longer in charge. It's being defeated and godly intimacy comes to the forefront. Number 17. Fasting increases your appetite for God and mine. Now you're focused on the word and prayer. You enjoy Bible reading except in, instead of hamburger, beef and cheese and all the other stuff that we eat. Number 17. Your health is restored during a fast. Isaiah 58. Poisons are flushed out. Your sight is sharpened. Number 18. Fasting leads to loss of weight. The real deal. I'm going to leave that alone. Number 19. You save money when you fast because the clothes that never used to fit. Hey, what can I say? That brings me to number 20. When a fast is attached to prayer, prayer is powerful by itself, but when a fast is attached to prayer, it's a power slam. It's a game changer. It's a power shifter. It's a devil chaser. Oh, I feel my help coming right now. Number 21. Fasting enables your supernatural help, Daniel. 21 days. And a demonic power was holding Daniel's angel. And he pressed his prayer. Sometimes you have to press your prayer. Push your prayer. Yes. Fasting speeds up the process that you can't do it physically. Number 22. Fasting shuts down evil altars and evil doors. Number 23. Fasting realigns us to our original destiny. The destiny, the thing that you are born to do. That's what God wants you to do still. You can do good at the expense of doing the best. And the best is what God wants you to do. You can do a good thing at the expense of a right thing. My neighbor asked me to stay and help her wash her home and weed her yard and wash her car. So I stayed on a Sunday. It's a good thing to help your neighbor. But staying home on a Sunday to help your neighbor, the devil is a liar. You're doing it at the expense of the purpose of God, the will of God, the design of God for your life. You're doing a good thing at the expense of the right thing. Good is not always right. All right. Fasting realigns our, our, our destiny. Number 23. Fasting turns the battle over to God. You shall not need to fight in this battle. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Number 24. All demonic anchors are severed by your spiritual help that is enabled by your fasting. Number 25. Don't cancel the power of the fast by toxic behavior and negative talking and sinful practices. Don't fast and do wickedness on the day when you're fasting. You know what wickedness is. Don't pretend like you don't know. Sing and praise and give God glory. Worshipping during the time of fast. Because things are going to change after that fast. Number 26. Whatever is resisting you will be broken during the fast. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. Whatever has been resisting you. And sometimes you know it. You know it. You know, I know, that based on the amount of efforts and energies and sacrifices that we have made to accomplish certain purposes, and after all that sacrifice, all that money, all that time, all that blood, sweat, and tears, and that thing is still not done. In fact, you're farther away from accomplishing it now than when you started off. AG double toothpicks, no. What's going on here? That's the time when you got to fast. You got to fast. You have got to fast. When the hurrier you go, the behinder you get, 
You have got to fast. When the law of diminishing returns is operating in your life, the more you put in, the less you get out. No. It's time for a fast, man. This thing has got to break. And for it to break, you're going to have to do more than you're doing right now, which you're eating five meals a day and ten snacks. No, you're going to have to put that belly to death and let the fasting begin and break that hex, break that vex, break that jinx, break that curse, break that spell, break that demonic stronghold, break that satanic strangle on your life, strangle on your finances, strangle on your health, strangle on your relationships. Hey, no. No way. It's got to break. My glory shall rise and shine. People shall see me for who I am and not for the rumors that they have heard. Where was I before I rudely interrupted? I think I was at number 27. Yes. There are some things that cannot be done outside of fasting. The disciples had Jesus. They loved Jesus. They had a rebuke. They had a bind. They had a loose. But the demon wouldn't move. And when Jesus cast it out, they said, well, why couldn't we cast it out? And he told them, number one, you guys don't believe a thing. Your unbelief. And number two, you see this kind of demon here? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Some things cannot get done without fasting. When you hit a roadblock on something that you're trying to do and it's not getting done, the formula, stitchy happy fast and pray, fast and pray till Christ all of my friend them find you. Stitchy happy fast and pray, fast and pray until the devil get thee behind. You have got to bring a fast into it, Stitchy. <laughs> Number 28. You and I, we must overcome the power of the belly, the power of the appetite. If you can't overcome your appetite, how are you going to overcome demons? Answer now. How are you going to overcome satanic power? You can't even control your belly. You're an appetite freak. You have just got to eat. And when you're having breakfast, you're thinking about lunch. And when you're having lunch, you're thinking about dinner. And when you're having dinner, you're thinking about the snack. And you eat, 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 eat. For what? You're supposed to eat to live, not live to eat. <laughs> they know, Rev, you're hitting hard. All right, where was I? 28? All right. Number 27 was, you must overcome the power of the appetite before you can overcome satanic power. Number 28. The thing that they didn't do was to fast. They did everything else. They, they prayed, they rebuked, they commanded, but nothing happened. So they had to add fasting to it. Number 30. To not fast is to disrespect the command of the king, King Jesus. When you fast, he said, I don't feel like fasting, we say. Or we say, I'm going to go on a Daniel fast. I'm going to eat banana. I'm going to eat mango. I'm going to eat pineapple. I'm going to eat avocado pear. I'm going to eat cane cane. I'm going to drink juice. I'm going to drink soup. I'm going to drink milk. I'm going to drink pop. Is that a fast? Who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? Number 30. Look. If you forget everything else that I say, number 30 is, is, the, is the salient point of salient points. It's a game changer. Number 30. In fasting, you get to know God in a way you cannot get to know God on a full stomach. Number 30. In fasting, you get to know God in a way you never can on a full stomach. There is something about Always giving in to your natural inclinations, desire for food, pride, sex. You're always giving in to anything. Pastor, you know, I got nature and I too sexy for my shorts and he came on to me and what do you want a girl to do? Are you crazy? You don't sleep with everybody who get the urge to merge. Discipline your flesh. Let me read that again. In fasting, you get to know God in a way you never can on a full stomach. You know how many people are embarrassed with some of the men they have been with, some of the women they have been with? People they don't even like. When they look back, they ask themselves, what happened to me? Did I, did I just lose my mind to sleep with he? I slept with her? That thing? <laughs> but you couldn't see it then. You were hot. 
Number 31. To not fast is to disrespect Jesus' way of life. The leader. Follow the leader, leader, leader. Follow the leader. <laughs> and Jesus is the leader, but we don't follow him. We follow Daniel fast. And when you do read the scripture, it has nothing to do with that. Number 32. To not fast is to show weakness to the satanic world. It's like throwing blood to sharks. To not fast is to show your weakness. The satanic world knows you don't fast. They have no respect for you. They have no regard for you. There's a certain kind of demon that has no regard for y'all, us all, because they know we're not fasting. We're eating all the time. Why? They're the ones who tempt us to eat so that we will not be at the place where we can deal with them. Have you noticed when you want to fast, that's when people want to take you to dinner? <laughs> Somebody brought food home for you. They brought a nice hamburger, the kind you like with fries and all the other stuff to stuff your face. Stuff your face. Number 33, to not fast is to make God a liar by saying you're unable to fast, you may die. You know, pastor, my head swing, my stomach ache, I see stars when I try to fast, I feel weak and I tremble. <laughs> That's just the body getting rid of the toxic stuff that has accumulated in the food that we eat, all that gunky food made in you know where. Number 34, to not fast is to demonstrate a level of rebellion that enforces satanic witchcraft. Number 35, to not fast into, is to entrench oneself in weakness that is unbiblical. Number 36, to not fast is to remain a below average Christian. Number 37, to not fast is to be targeted by evil spirits that do not respect you. Number 38, when you fast, you have explosive supernatural power that the satanic world cannot handle. Number 39, when you fast, you move from the, the average believer to an above average believer, which is a very rare kind of believer. Most believers today are average or below average. You can't tell the difference between a child of God and a child of hell. We live the same way, we cuss the same way, we steal the same way, we sleep around the same way, we rob the same way, we divorce. The, in fact, the church divorce rate is higher than the world now. What's up with that? And they want to give counsel on marriage. You got seven divorces. You counseling me on marriage. Number 40. All of the, the generational matters that you're dealing with. Everybody in your family divorcing. Everybody in your family getting arrested, going to jail. Always a case of insanity in your family. Always a case of rape in your family. Always a case of several abortions in your family. The men in your family don't like to work. They are always vagrants and just lazy, parasitic type men. All the men in your family are whoremongers. They are whorish. They like to jump from bed to bed, from woman to woman. And your son is looking like he's going to behave just like his father. When you, when you walk through your family, when you go through the history of your family, don't worry my family, look at your own. Suss it out, the Rasta man said, and he was right. Check out what's happening in your family line, in your bloodline. What's happening there? And you would notice a trend, a propensity, a proclivity, a particular specific behavior that you can point to. A cyclical negative occurrence that seemed to happen over and over, and it has been repeating itself. You are 40, you are 30, you are 20, and your mother had it, and her mother had it, and her mother had it. Your father had it, and his father had it, and his father had it, and your brother got it. It's a generational thing. Generational powers need fasting and prayer to dislodge them. You're not going to dislodge them with your little, little itty-bitty committee. you got to take that devil on with a fast. Gandhi fast. you got to take that devil on with a fast. Jesus fasted. You got to take that devil on with a fast. Moses fasted. You got to take that devil on with a fast. Say, Pastor, yes, you know, man, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I don't have the time to fast. Make time! Look, Esther and her girls and Mordecai and the nation of Israel went on a fast to save the life of every single Jew 
spread across 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. Three days to take care of the history and destiny of a nation. You can't spend three days to break a thing that has been in your family line for 120 years. You can't take three days of, of all the life that God has given you to go in a fast. You can't separate. You can't consecrate some days, some time away from everything else to lock away with God, to come out with power. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Don't get me. Don't get me in my zone now. You got to have some discipline. You got to be important enough. Your history and destiny has to be important enough for you to go on a fast. The freedom of your family has to be important enough for you, could, for you to go on a fast. Oh, glory to God. All right. So I give you 40. I got more, but I'm not going to give you any more. I don't need to overload your brain with all kinds of stuff. But you should go on a fast. Are you feeling a brother? All right. I'm going to stop there for tonight. I got too much stuff if I start again. Some of it is so rich, it just makes me smile. You know, some things just tickle my funny bone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you would empower the people to fast. Empower the people to fast. Today is the 22nd day of January. 2019. 30 days of September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February that has 28 days in a year and 29 days in one leap year. So January has 31 days. You got nine days more. Take three days out of those nine days and join Lieutenant Stitchy and fast and pray. Target the thing that's giving you the most trouble. Look, look, don't pray for everybody and everything and the world and Donald Trump and, and stop that. This fast here is for you. Yeah, for you. This fast you're going on, this fast I'm going on, this fast we're going on. It's not for everybody. <laughs> you're targeting generational things that must be broken from off of your life and broken from off of your bloodline. You are targeting the cap, the cap, that, that space in time that you can't seem to ascend above. You're kept at this level. Your father rented, your grandfather rented, your great-grandfather rented. Have you noticed everybody in your family renting stuff? Nobody owns anything. The devil is a liar. It's time to own. It's time to move from tenant to landlord, landlady, in the name of Jesus. You got to break that thing that that has the family always renting stuff or some old house at the back of the rats and roaches running all over the place i am not living like that he double two picks no you got to uh, you got to target this thing yeah fasting is like a laser your target you're aiming a hasherus a hasherus a hasherus change the decree lord that's all she prayed and fasted about turn the king's heart and let him change the decree which is unchangeable but after three days when she walked in the Boom shakalaka. He didn't know what hit him. He thought the beauty pageant was the time when he saw her as the essence of quintessence. But this time when he saw her, he felt a shiver in his liver. He had to stretch out the scepter for her to come girl down to the half of the kingdom. I will give it to you tonight. And if I hold you tonight is thunder. <laughs> Ow! Oh, rata shata eta mosquito. I bought a suzuka, but I should have bought a Honda. Target the thing that's giving your bloodline trouble with a fast and smash it, pulverize it, decimate it, destroy it, dislocate it, yank its hand from off of your family line and tell it to go. A fast will do that. Rev, you're just trying to get us excited. Look, stop wasting my time, eh? I don't have time to patty cake. I don't have time to rub heads. I don't, I'm not trying to win friends and influence people up in here. I'm trying to make warriors out of wimps. I know how terrified you are of fasting. You think you're going to die. <laughs> you say, Rev, you know, if I fast half day, I see Ning Ning, you know, Ning Ning. That's just something, you know, you see stars like you hit your head. You see stars. We call it Ning Ning. I don't know what Ning Ning is, but that's what the explanation was given. People feel like they're going to die if they fast. You are not going to die. I shall not die. 
but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Target that thing for destruction because fasting is a game changer. Boom is out.